Hello, Pastor Deborah here. Welcome, welcome again to my living room. But really, in the realm of the spirit, we're in the Garden of Eden, the very presence on earth of God. Yeah. Which God? The only God. The word God means self-sustaining life source. Now, you might believe in other gods and told that there are many gods or no gods. But Pastor Deborah, me, I serve the one true God. That's right. God, the great I am. Mm -hmm. Did you know he had been trying to talk with humans even in the days of Egypt, ancient Egypt and the pharaohs? One pharaoh, Akhenaten, Saw him in the sun, called him the sun god, did away with all the poly gods and the priest of those poly gods and, and the temples, and said we were to only worship and pray to one god, the sun god, that gave its rays of light to all on earth. Yeah. We didn't know his name at that time. They just called him the sun god. But he was working back then, trying to reach us. We were in darkness and ignorance about him. But he came thousands and thousands of years later, walked on the earth in a dirt body named Jesus. He was the Christ. He was the anointed king inside of that young man. And he talked to us. He demonstrated his power of his kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, to us. He tried to tell us who we were, who he was. It was hard because we were so ignorant. We didn't understand spiritual talk. We were all believers in polygods. Mm -hmm. That's right. We didn't believe God would come down here. We had forgotten. He tried one time. On a mountain with fire and smoke scared everybody. All the Israelites ran to their tents. They needed a prophet to talk to him, Moses. They said, you go talk to God yourself, and you come back and tell us what he said. Mm -hmm. That's not what the intention was. God wanted to be talking to all of us, but he found a way in Christ Jesus. And then when that Christ Jesus was crucified, sacrifice not he didn't commit suicide he wasn't hopeless he had a joy that was set before him a reward and he willingly gave his life for you mm -hmm. that's right and guess what happened oh now he's inside pastor deborah when i believed so here we are in another part of this wonderful letter called my dear spiritual child letter from me agape love himself this is part number 47 i'm recording as you know on zoom pro with a motion video from whoops from pixabay now if you notice my hand just disappears i don't have a green screen behind me Tried the big ones, homemade ones, ones attached to a chair. None of it works for me. I have enough problem just sitting down when the house is quiet, hooking up my camera, my laptop, and recording for about an hour. And then if I had to add a green screen to that. So I don't look that clear to you, I know. And things happen around my hair. You see my background, my hand disappears to the video but please forgive me i'm trying to get through a lots and lots of recordings so when i'm gone on to eternity and this physical body has given way to death i'll still be here on youtube talking to you helping you encouraging you talking to you about the love that you don't know who loves you yet so we're going to pick up here in the Royal Invitation, 
part of this letter, and it's part number three. We should be able to finish that out and then start the next part of the letter called Born Again. But right now, welcome to the garden, all of you from all over the world. As long as you're not dead yet and gone on to heaven or maybe hell, you are welcome even if you don't believe in this God yet. He allows that to happen, to reach you, to touch you. He is not dependent on his church to do that. Many of them don't move in the gifts of the spirit. They don't believe in all this spiritual stuff because it doesn't do any earthly good in their minds. They read the scriptures from the eyes of the natural, the eyes of the flesh, Mm -hmm. And their denomination. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of it is important. And keeping the physical body alive is important. But God is working in the realm of the spirit. He's after you, the forever person, that spiritual part of you, that upon earthly death, even in the womb, through abortion or an infancy, through sickness, disease, starvation, war, He's got you, you, the forever person. That's the one he's working with, trying to reach, touch. And here is your royal invitation, part number three. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for drawing all these people to your garden, for you to reach them so they can hear you. Father, we thank you that you are about your business of Isaiah 61 and 62. And you are working even without helping, even without most of your church helping. Father, you are the gentle speaker, the gentle priest, the gentle shepherd. Your words of kindness and love will be spoken here today in this royal invitation. Father, help them to find you, to seek you, and to take your hand, and then walk on the road with you all the days of their life, and then on into eternity upon earthly death. Father, be about your business. This is your ministry, your work, but you, your Holy Spirit, your Son, Christ Jesus, have been working towards since before the foundation of the world even began. So be about your work. And we thank you for drawing all of these wonderful, wonderful spirits here to your garden so they can hear your word unimpeded by the soul and its flesh and its lust and the physical body. Thank you, Father, for doing what only you can do in the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Okay, we're going to pick up in part three of a royal invitation. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Step out of the dark and into the light. We had just finished that this God was the victor through his love over many, many enemies of him and his kingdom, and his adversary named Satan. So let's listen how his words of love to you continue. When you open the door of your heart, your mind, you will spiritually see my royal road. Step onto my royal road of agape love and light. He's shining his light on the road so you can see it. It'll be clear before you. It'll just be a little bit at a time. But he will shine his light. Come out. Come out wherever you are. Come out of your trances, your deep sleeps, your hidden worlds. Come out of your fear of death. Come out. Come out of the world. Come out of your governments. Come out 
of your prison cells, wherever you are, and step out of the dark, out of ignorance, and into the light. Follow my path, my road. Don't stop. Keep walking. Cross over my bridge. Step into my kingdom of heaven. Follow my royal road. Don't stop. Keep walking. Follow my flags, my banners, my standards of agape love and light. They will show you the way to go. Don't stop. Keep walking. You have only just begun the journey. You are not at my final destination for you yet spiritually. Don't spiritually stop. Keep spiritually walking. Spiritually let go of all you've brought with you. Lay all your old spiritual stuff that you've brought with you on the side of the road. I will pick it all up. Come out. Come out of wherever you are. Step out of the darkness, the ignorance, and into the light. Lay down all your unbelief, your doubts, your fears, your traditions of men, your religions, following the herd, your pride, your self-preservation, your earthly desires of the lust of your eyes, your flesh, and the pride of life. Lay down all your bitterness, your revenge, your unforgiveness. All, sweetie, all. Lay it all down on the side of the road. I will pick it up. For you cannot spiritually reach my final destination spiritually. I have for you while you're carrying all this old stuff from the darkness, from the kingdom of darkness, from your old life with you. They will hinder you, slow you down, and cause you hardship and heartache. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Step out of the darkness and into the light. So lay it all down on the side of the road. It will all be picked up. When you get spiritually closer to my final destination for you, I will give you a brand new, I will give you brand new spiritual stuff to carry with you. And it's all brand new. And you will spiritually love my new stuff that I have for you, says the Heavenly Father, the King of the Kingdom of Heaven, the God of the King James Bible, the God of Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, King David, King Solomon, the God called Christ Jesus of Nazareth. The God of the New Testament of the Bible. The God of now. The God of glory and majesty. So don't stop spiritually. Keep walking. Keep growing. Keep learning. Keep coming. Stay on my spiritual royal path of holiness and righteousness. Don't spiritually stray to the right or to the left. Stay right in the middle of my lighted path. I have my light on it. It will show the way for you to keep walking. I'll light the way for you. My light of my words of spirit and life will spiritually shine on it. On my path, my royal road, so you can see where to step. So walk, come and see, and taste all I have for you, all I spiritually desire 
to give you. I have an everlasting covenant for you to receive. Come out. Come out of wherever you are. Step out of the dark, your ignorance, and into the light. All I have is yours. All you have is mine. Your stuff for my stuff. A very good exchange. I'll be keeping a watchful, spiritual eye on you as you walk. And I will be eagerly awaiting your arrival. When you get here, I will throw a state dinner, a reception for you, and introduce you to all of the kingdom of heaven. We, you and I, will be one family. I will be in you, and you will be in me. One plus one equals one. I will be seeing you very soon. Please don't take too long. I'm so excited to see you and be with you. May your spiritual journey be one filled with great joy and peace that is ever flowing like a river, never ending. Come out. Come out. Wherever you are, spiritually step out of the spiritual darkness and into spiritual light. Remember to put on my full spiritual suit of armor that I have for you. Take unto yourself my whole spiritual armor of me, God so that you may be able to spiritually stand in the days of evil, of attacks, of fighting. Then stand strong in my full spiritual armor I have given you, provided for you on this long spiritual journey. Stand spiritually strong in all my spiritual authority and dominion, having your loins, your legs girdled about with my truth and light, having on my spiritual breastplate of my spiritual righteousness, and put on your feet my spiritual shoes of my gospel, my good news, glad tidings of peace, between me and all humanity. Put on my spiritual reconciliation and put on your feet my spiritual shoes of my gospel, my good news, glad tidings of peace between me and all of humanity, of my spiritual reconciliation, my spiritual redemption, and salvation. Above all, pick up my shield of my faith, where you will be able to spiritually quench, put out, destroy all the fiery spiritual darts, the words, the deeds, the attacks of the wicked. And there are wicked ones. Words of cursing, threats, vexation. We see it in the natural all the time. Mm -hmm. That's coming out of the realm of the spirit, through the soul, through the physical body. And then put on my spirit helmet of my righteous spiritual salvation, the very mind of Christ, the anointed king, the word of God, my spiritual light and truth, and agape love over your spiritual heart, your mind, 
your thoughts, your concepts, your attitudes, your feelings of your spirit. And don't forget to pick up my spiritual sword of my spirit. My words of spirit and life means don't forget to speak to yourself my words and to others my words. Use my words, my sword of the spirit to fight in battles. Come out, come out wherever you are. Step out of the dark and into the light. Then pray to me before and during and after the battles, for I am with you and I have your back. Pray unto me, ask of me for help, petition me as the judge of the universe, for I am here for you spiritually. Then in patience and perseverance, watch and wait, for there is nothing I cannot do and will not do for you spiritually. You are the love of my heart. I've been waiting for you to come back to me for so very long. I've been waiting since you were born into the world. Waiting for you to come home. Now my long wait is finally over also. For I've been without you for so long, for too long. My heart and mind and soul can now rest and be at peace. For now, you have been returned spiritually unto me. And you are on your way. I'll be waiting for you. Your heavenly Father, God, the Most High, the Almighty God. I'm waiting for you to come home all the way and get to know me. Love to you, my dearest spiritual child. I love you so very much. I have missed you. But now we are a family again, back as one, together for all eternity. And that is your royal invitation. Come home. Come back. See his light on a path. Let all your old stuff go. You can't come into this new life with him, into the kingdom, with all your unforgiveness, your memories, your bitterness of all the abuse in the world. You can't bring it with you, for you will not grow. It will be as a cancer to you, a disease in your soul. You cannot do that and have the fullness of spirit and grow spiritually. You have to let it go. And he will pick it up. Come. The royal invitation has been sent. Your name is on it. Come home. Come back. Come out of the darkness and slavery to the fear of death, to serving Satan evil and wickedness, to serving the lust of your flesh, the lust of your eyes and the pride of life. Come home, back to agape love and truth and the kingdom of heaven. And if you want that, and you want to get on the path back and come on home to the state, to the kingdom, we want you so very much. Then just say, yes, I want to come home right where you are right now, and it's done. You'll begin to walk on the path, and you will begin your journey. And the royal invitation then will be sent back to him saying, they've accepted. They've RSVP back. They're coming. They'll be home. It's done. Father, this is your work your royal invitation to them, nobody else's. 
for your heart loves them so much, not as they are. And you didn't create them the way they are. That was created by another father that perverted the DNA, the soul conceived in sin and shaped in iniquity. But you love the spirit, the forever person that you always intended to be your child, ruling and reigning here on earth from the kingdom of heaven. Father, you're the alpha, the very beginning, and you will be the end on a new earth. Father, be about your work, recreating, salvaging, redeeming lost children to you. Birth them anew through the blood of Christ, through the blood of Christ from a cross. Help them walk, help them to walk over the bridge to you. Father, be with them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Okay. Come on home. And that was your royal invitation from God himself. Mm -hmm. And we'll pick up next week in another part of my dear spiritual child letter for you. Yes, you can stay in the garden and play. And the next part is called Born Again. It has to do with a little one telling us about getting born once and then getting born again. And that's what salvation, redemption is all about, being born again. I'll see you then. Bye.